it's Platt, and today we head to Greece. That's next with Platt's Beer of the Week. So the uh, particular beer we have today comes with us from Greece. It is Hellas. It's a European lager. A little background to Hellas. Hellas is imported by Fotis & Sons, importing based out of Hinta Beach, California. Apparently, Fotis & Sons uh, imports uh, olives, olive oil, pita, uh, Mediterranean food products, generally from Greece, but throughout the Mediterranean. Um, and this particular beer is a contract brew. They don't brew it themselves. Um, apparently, they also are into wine. They probably sell directly to Greek restaurants on the West Coast. And thus, this beer is a complimentary product to, to their whole line of uh, imported products. The people that make this beer is actually Macedonian Thrice, Thrace Brewing, uh, based in Komotini, Greece. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, interesting little background on that brewery. The brewery itself was founded in 1996 by a gentleman named Dimitri Papadopoulos. Dimitri was a chemical engineer, but also had graduated from the Sable Institute of Brewing in Chicago, so he also had a Brewing background, uh, apparently him and I think maybe his brother were looking for a business idea and found out that there was no truly Greek-owned breweries or no Greek-based breweries. Uh, apparently there were some like regional breweries for like Heineken, the big corporate conglomerates, but no true brewery producing a true Greek beer. And so they decided to move back to the motherland and create a brewery, which they did in 1996. Now, initially they ran into some headwinds. Apparently, the local Heineken brewery tried to get in their way legally. There was a court battle, but they won the court battle and got to produce uh, a true Greek beer. Uh, the, the line of beer that they produce is called Virginia. It's spelled V-E-R instead of V-I-R, so hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, and it was made uh, pridefully with 100% Greek barley malt, so a, a true Greek enterprise. Uh, real quick, let's talk about some of their other beers at uh, Macedonian Thrace Brewing. Uh, first is Virginia Lager, a 5% ABV European lager. This is their flagship beer and most popular style of beer out there. Um, they also have Virginia Red, a 5.5% uh, ABV red uh, or amber lager. Uh, comes with a uh, a hint of fruit and honey. I love a good red beer, so I'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Next, we have uh, Virginia Stout, 5.5% ABV. This is a dry stout with a coffee and vanilla finish. Lastly is Virginia Weiss. Uh, they build this as a South German style Weiss beer. It's the first time I've heard that term. I'm not saying it's not valid or anything, but I've never heard that term before. This beer is their most critically acclaimed beer, um, has, has gotten praise from several reviewers, also in different competitions. They won um, several accolades at the International Brewing Awards, and critics would say this is probably their best beer they produce. Now, besides the Virginia line, like I said, they also do contract brewing. Uh, they they uh, brew the Edelsteiner brand, the Prost brand, and of course, Hellas is another brand that they they produce. Um, again, kind of a cool story. It, it, it's weird to think that a major European country did not have, you know, kind of the local or national brewery in the mid-90s, but apparently they didn't, and uh, thus Dimitri stepped in to fix that. Well, before we try this particular beer, though, let's check out the stats. So today, real quick, I thought I would talk about the difference between European lagers and American lagers. I've had a few of these beers on the, on the uh, channel before, and so I thought today I'd kind of talk about the differences because... And when I'm talking about European and American lagers, I'm talking about the kind of big mass-produced lagers. I'm not talking about, you know, there's, there's a ton of, you know, variations of lagers, you know, a Bach or, you know, there's dark lagers, light lagers, wheat lagers, you know. I'm talking about the mass-produced lager from the big kind of corporate breweries and, and the difference between the two. 
Uh, both of these styles of beer, European and American beers, are kind of based in the Pilsner style beer. Now, the Pilsner beer did not really show up until the 1840s, and of course in Europe they were already producing lager style beers like a Marzen, uh, Water for Oktoberfest. But again, what we know of and think of today as the mass produced light or pale lager, that has its roots in the Pilsner. Now, it came over to here to the U.S. Uh, by a German brewers, immigrants that came over, um, Anheuser-Busch, Miller, Coors, they were all founded by German brewers that brought over the, their own kind of Pilsner style recipe. And it quickly became the style of beer here in America before that we drink ales. But also too, it didn't take the American brewers long to start adding their tweaks to it. Uh, one of the things, uh, the difference is, the American lager and the American palate just was not, especially back then, up for the quite as much hop bitterness or hop bite on the finish. Uh, also, too, the American brewers were more open earlier to the use of adjuncts. Uh, Anheuser-Busch is a prime example. They quickly jumped on the rice, again, just a little cheaper, added additional fermentables, you know, at, at a reasonable cost to the brewers. A uh, couple of things kind of against the European lager, some people say. One of them is they generally always went in a green bottle that allowed light to get in, which that added a little bit of skunking. You know, that Heineken always has that kind of classic skunk to it, and a lot of those European lagers do because of the green bottle. Also, too, not, not in every uh, instance, but a lot of times you'll, you'll find some of these European lagers are done more of a session-style beer, lower ABV, 2 to 3%, where most the mass produced American beers in the low fours. So you get a little more alcohol in these American beers. Uh, this particular beer is different. It's, it's a five percenter. But you'll see that difference in the American versus European lager. Which one's better? It's everybody different. You know, if you grew up on the stuff, you know, you, you, you're just kind of used to it and that's kind of your base for all other beers. So, but anyway, that's, that's the difference between the two styles and just weekly. Quickly wanted to go over that. Enough about lagers. Let's drink one. All right, we've got a nice golden color, nice finger width of uh, white foam. Pretty simple, kind of straightforward malt. Um, again, as you'll probably notice, it's in a brown bottle, so we're not getting any of that skunkiness on the nose. Let's give it a try. That is interesting. It definitely got a sweetness to it, but it's, it's different. I don't know if it's the water. Um, there's oddly a level... Uh, a level of funkiness to it, which I'm, I'm kind of surprised. Again, you get that in the green bottles. This is a lager, so it's not coming from the yeast. Um, I'm going to presume this is pretty straightforward as far as recipe, as far as, you know, we're just using barley malt and yeast and trying to make a clean beer, but this has a little funkiness to it. Also, too, it does have a little more mouthfeel, a little more body than our light American lager. Um, if you drink, and not everybody does, you know, we'll drink a full-bodied, let's say a Budweiser or whatever, you'll notice, you know, a little difference in the mouthfeel. I definitely noticed this. Um, this is pretty good, though. It's, it's not a bad beer. Got a little more flavor to it, a little more malt to it, a little more body than a traditional, like I said, American lager. But it's still easy drinking, still goes down real easy. Uh, probably really just a great compliment for food, which again, if they're importing, you know, all this stuff, you know, there's a lot of saltiness, brininess to some of that stuff. This is a great kind of pal uh, palate cleanser beer. Really kind of works. A again, it's not so light where, you know, it's glorified water or whatever. You get a little bit of flavor to it, but again, it's light enough that it, it should work with a lot of different foods. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, 
please leave me in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.